Hello and welcome to NewsClick. Swedish software developer and privacy activist Ola Bini remains in prison in Ecuador where he is on pre-trial detention. His parents have come to Ecuador and have asked the Swedish government to intervene strongly in the case, declaring that they are there to bring their son back home. Ola Bini was arrested on April 11th without any charges and the case is still going on. To talk more about this, we have with us Kiran Chandra, the General Secretary of the Free Software Movement of India. FSMI is one of the organizations in the forefront of the free Ola Bini campaign that is going on globally. Hello Kiran. Kiran, to start with, could you talk a bit about why various tech organizations across the world have joined together in this campaign to free Ola Bini? See, the arrest of Ola Bini has been very sensitive to all the privacy lovers of the world and also the technologists. The way that he has been portrayed in certain sections of the European media is something that is really worrisome and it is un uh, unprecedented for him. He has been portrayed as someone with some criminal motives. And it is very unfortunate if you look at who Ola Bini has been, is an important question that the society beyond the tech community needs to really look at. Ola Bini has been a developer for more than one and a half decades. And he has been contributing significantly to the society. In the last one year itself, if we were to really quantify and look at the magnitude of the work that he has done for the global common good, in the last one year itself, he has committed close to 1,200 times to the different free software repositories that are publicly available. It comes down, if you assume that Ola was working for 10 hours a day, and he was contributing in one year, for every three hours, he has been contributing code to the society. You have just blocked him, put him behind the bars, and the way in which he has been portrayed is he really worrisome. What did Ola Bini do is the question that is pondering us. His contribution was very significant in the dimensions of privacy enhancement technologies, in the area of free software development, and also in the lines of multidisciplinary subjects that include drug discovery. And I think the way in which he has been criminalized, the way in which a techie programmer who is a Swedish national living in Ecuador with valid work permits, and he has been, he has made Ecuador his home for the last few years. All the developers of the world were having a different perception about Ecuador. And now Ecuador illegally detains him in violation of all international laws, did not allow him to speak to his lawyers, detains him for 30 hours, and then produces him in front of the judge. That too very late in the night. And he, even in the absence of any interpreter, he is forced to speak with the judge. And all these are serious issues of concern. And he has been taken to preventive custody. He has been put into detained as a cause of prevention. I think with all valid permits who has been doing it and the way in which he has been criminalized, he has been picked up from the flight as if that he was fleeing the country. If you look at Ola Bini's blogs or if you look at Ola Bini's tweets, we all very well understand that he is a martial arts passionate person and he announced much in advance that he was leaving for Japan to pursue his martial arts events. And I think the way in which he has been pursued, he has been called as a Russian while he's a Swedish national. The Swedish embassy has not been communicated until his parents have been approaching this Swedish government. And the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs needs to protect its their own citizen. The way in which they are attributing Ola Bini makes us feel that being a good programmer and working for the society is a crime. And I think this is precisely the reason why the whole global tech communities are organizing ourselves for the release of Joe Ola Bini. He's one amongst us. We are one amongst him. And this is going to be one for all, all for one among the developer fraternity. And it is also part of a larger tendency to look at secure communications and privacy as something very, uh, say, something not part of common life, so to speak. So could you talk a bit more also about why secure communications and privacy is basically not just restricted to a small group, but is essential for everyone? 
See, there is a difference between secrecy and privacy. There is a difference between state secrets and there is a difference between private communication. Private communication between individuals has been, you could say, I would not say as a fundamental right, but a de facto well-accepted right since the dawn of the civilization. They have got possibilities of talking to each other in mutual trust without nobody watching them. And the privacy technologists, what are they doing? They are just ensuring that these rights, these rights which exist with people, and the communications in the form of computers, I would even call the smartphones that exist today, are many more times more sophisticated than the computers that existed half a decade back. So when people are communicating over more mobile phones or with computers, it is elementary that such rights are guaranteed. Olavini has been one of the important developers in the world, I would say, that he would stand in the front lines of the very few developers who are doing it and releasing it back to the society so that community at large and society at large will be benefited so that nobody stoops down into every finite discussion or communication between their dear ones. So ensuring that people could communicate in privacy is something that Olavini has been doing. If you were to look at in the recent what did he contribute to? The off the, the off the record communication system as a technology has been brought forward precisely for this purpose. So he was the person who developed it and released in the recent globally acknowledged PETS symposium in Barcelona in the last summer that he has contributed his work, he has released it for the society. The entire source code is available for public consumption and review. Think so if you call this, that is primary work of making something that is possible, if that is being taken away from the people's rights, if he comes forward to protect it and you make a tale, construct a story around it and criminalize him, I think that is something which is of very serious concern. I think this is criminalization of humanity. This is criminalization of human instincts. The way people communicate with each other and people talk to each other on any of these things are not something to do or something for the state to really bother about. And people being allowed to have such a communication is a basic right, which is a well agreed right. And technologists who are developing such technologies are doing it, and they are, I would say, that the social workers who are ensuring the safety of the mankind. And Ola Bini falls into that category and he is being criminalized precisely for developing such technologies and uh, i understand that ola bini has also attended a couple of events of the free software movement of india and he's interacted with some of the activists so could you also talk a bit about your experiences in terms of interacting and working with him and the inspiration he had on the volunteers of the movement i would say that ola bini in person, having known him for quite some time, is a very inspiring person to work with. Humble, humble to the extent. If you go and ask him about the technology, if he knows something, if he doesn't, he's not confident about it, or if he's not 100% sure about it, he doesn't say with any authority. He says that with authority, he says that I have no clue of this. He's a very humble person and a very nice human being as far as anyone who has interacted with him knows. Most importantly, he has been a source of inspiration. You see, he, when you look at one of the important specializations of Ola Vini has been the optimal utilization of different hardware. He basically allows us to use, he doesn't go with any of the other patterns of just buying the new tech stuff, new hardware stuff and just using it. He's not against any of those things, but he helps people nurture use them for various purposes where even an old computer can be used for. We have had certain workshops of those kind on optimization of some of those stuff. How do we do it? How do we use it? Because we wanted it in a context of school education, where we are a developing nation, where infrastructure is a matter of concern, access is a matter of concern. He has extreme capabilities in any of these things. He being an extremely knowledgeable programmer who works on the technologies that people would be consuming in the next half decade. 
he also is a person who can find right solutions to the school kids he can inculcate passionate programming and make people make passionate programmers and that is all he has been motivating and asking people to do along with that some of the important works that he is he's, he has got he's an extremely great intellectual whom i have met who does a lot of stuff in interdisciplinary sciences all these in the interest of the human kind and he has motivated on a multiple number of times wherever he has gone to he is a person who can speak to the top most developers of the world and at the same time he can go to schools and also to any of the people who are completely non techies and explain stuff and we have we are proud to say that we have associated with him and we have seen him worked him on multiple dimensions but when you look at some of the ways in which the ecuadorian government is trying to criminalize him i looked at the photograph where the police department of ecuador has said that these are a certain things that he possesses if you have a closer look at it what do you have you have different variants generations of laptops if i am a programmer for the last two decades i would be holding keeping the laptops with me and i would not be contributing to the environmental pollution of just discarding them out just because they are old or not fashionable anymore for the necessity you hold all of those laptops with you and as the hardware advances you need interoperable port converters possession of port converters possession of laptops possession of hard disks possession of possession of network cables possession of adapters possession of storage devices what nonsense is that is it criminal to hold any of those things i would challenge the ecuadorian government if you visit the presidential office you will be finding more hardware than what was found in ola benes house and ecuador should be proud on multiple counts and not harass the intellect of ola beni for doing or taking up all these kinds of activities thank you so much kiran thank you very much news click also spoke to noted lawyer renata avila on the arrest of ola beni here is what she had to say Again, the, uh, I am familiar with the work of Ola Bimi because he's an expert, often you know, uh, offering his expert at the European Union at a different fora. He's very prestigious and very capable, and it was such an honor that he uh, he was uh, based in a Latin American country and trying to transfer his knowledge and share his knowledge with the Latin American community, and uh, the the. Uh, the gaslighting effect of uh, the Lenin Moreno arrest just he's trying to save space basically and he's trying to picture this is a, a big conspiracy he's trying to do the the show the trial show that the US administration did or with the Russian hackers he wants to recreate this circus in Ecuador to his benefit uh, and i am really ashamed of the of the ecuadorian authorities they cannot ignore completely uh, uh, basic uh, civil rights and human rights i hope that the ecuadorian community as well opens their eyes and, and realizes that they they uh, they have really a bad deal of the people that they have elected that's all we have time for today keep watching newsclick